Cherries, welcome to Live Jerry Cherry Sunday, special Tuesday episode 154. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the Mixolydian mode and the pentatonic scale, minor pentatonic, to play a mean blues guitar solo. So I do have a backing track that I created for this lesson today. And if you want that free backing track, just email me at info at jerrycherry com and I'll shoot that right over to you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, have a listen to what I'm doing here on the backing track. It's in the key of A. Regular 12 bar blues, and I'll give you that free backing track if you want it. Just email me, info at Jerry Cherry. So I just want to say hello to my friends here in the chat, real quick. And as usual, I'll put timestamps in the description so you can get right to it. Scott Olson, good morning. Give a round of applause. Jeffrey Boyle, give a round of applause as well. Let's see if you can hear my guitar at all here. Bro got the telly today for this, some delay. The Nobles, ODR1 Mini Drive. So we're rocking. I'm playing this guitar today because it has some sentimental meaning to me. And uh, even though I only had this since 2020, my first guitar was actually a, a very cheap copy of a telly that looked just like this. It was an Austin. It was made by the company Austin. <laughs> a very cheap copy. I don't have it anymore, but it was a... The funny thing is, is I cut it. I don't know if I told you this story before, but I cut it to make it look like a Strat. Time. I was 12 years old at the time. So, I feel like playing this one today for that reason. I'm not going to cut it. This is a broadcaster. I'm not cutting this one. It is Telly Tuesday. <laughs> you know, Scott, I didn't, didn't even realize that. It is Tuesday. Telly Tuesday. I really love that. Really, really interesting, huh? <laughs> All right. So I got something that's really fun. It's really going to be uh, pretty simple, too. We're going to play this blues here today. And we're going to keep it really simple. <clears throat> because over the A chord, we're just going to play the A minor pentatonic scale. Over the, actually, we're gonna mix. We're gonna mix in the mixolydian mode, along with the um, the A pentatonic, because that really shapes the chord. You have an A7. In that A7, you have the, the roots. You have a major third. You have the seventh. You have the fifth. So the A mixolydian mode it has the root, the major second, major third, the fourth. Fifth, sixth, dominant seven, and then the root again. Not to be confused with the major scale, which will sound like this. This is the mixolydian mode. The only note that's different is the seventh, it's flat, because it fits that, that A7 chord. But we're not going to leave out the the minor pentatonic, or the blues scale, which just adds that one extra note, that flat five. There it is right there. All right, you 
right, you love the tally? So we'll add that blues note in there too. You know, you can bend up. Here's the fourth to the fifth. It's in between. Now when it goes to the four chord, the D7, I'm going to stay away from the D minor pentatonic. And I'm going to just play the A minor pentatonic again because it just fits in there. You know, where you have the... Um, you have the D. So if you play the A minor pentatonic, pretty much outlines the notes of the of the D7 as well. Because you have on the C note, you have the seventh degree of D here. On the A note, you have the fifth of D. And you have the uh, the G is the fourth of it. The second. And once again, you have the seventh. But you could also mix in the D mixolydian mode as well. So here's the D mixolydian. It's just basically targeting the chord tones of, of the chord there. So while you're playing the over that D chord, you could target some of the notes as well, like the the major third, as well as blending, as well as blending in the mix, mixolydian. I mean the pentatonic scale mixolydian. Hopefully you're with me so far on this. And then the last chord, the five chord, over the E, you can basically play anything you want there, but <laughs> we're gonna play the E minor pentatonic. Or the E mixolydian. So all three of these chords have their own mixolydian mode that you could play basically just to target the notes that are in there. It's like playing in an arpeggio. Thank you, Scott. Gotta love Telecaster. So let's go ahead and uh, if you're enjoying this video so far, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Let's take a pass at this, doing exactly what I was saying. And, you know, one thing that you should really just kind of keep in mind is to um, just relax. I always like to mention that at first. Relax. Basically talking to myself, too, really. <laughs> and stick the landings. That's something that I coined the phrase. Or stick the landings, meaning try to land on those notes in time. <laughs> try to land on the right notes at the right time. That means you're thinking ahead. You're always kind of thinking a little bit, not too much, but where you're going, where you're going to land. So let's give it a shot here. Pack of the Blues. Hello. Good to see you.
trying to keep this as simple as possible, playing some blues, using just the A minor pentatonic scale and blending in the mixolydian mode. So any questions about any of this stuff, please let me know. Love to be helpful I'm here on a Tuesday. I usually go live on Sunday. Couldn't do it because I was out of town. I was in Buffalo and playing the world's largest disco out there with my disco band. <laughs> it was a good time. It was a good time out there. So, yeah, one thing that I'm really trying to focus on here is um, bending strings and vibrato. You know, really trying to bend up to the notes. To me, that's really one of the most important things is uh, bending strings and vibrato. <laughs> Scott Olson, do you have a diagram showing the different scales you're using? I do. Um, I usually would have them. I thought they were here on my um, on my uh, e my ecam that I use. I usually have a folder with the diagrams, but they kind of disappeared. It must have they must have done an update and got rid of them. But I have them on another folder, so I'll send them over to you. I'll send those diagrams to you. Just let me know. Email me at info at Jerry Cherry. I'll send you a PDF of the three scales diagrams that I'm, that I'm using today, which are basically, you can just switch the cam though. It'd be a lot more helpful <laughs> if I went to here. I'm using the um, A minor pentatonic scale. <laughs> I'm also mixing in the A mixolydian mode. Go say hello real quick to Alan. Alan Shenford. Sounds really good. Well, thank you very much, Alan. That's really, really cool of you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> But yeah, I'll send you those diagrams because I do have them. It's just in another folder. I didn't have time to bring them up to, into this program right here. So, so yeah, it's A minor pentatonic. Blended in with the A mixolydian. When it goes to D, I'm still playing A minor pentatonic. But I could... I could um, target the D notes while I'm playing an A minor pentatonic. So over this D chord, I could play the D here. Most of the notes are related to the D as well in A minor pentatonic. Or I could actually hit the you know the, the arpeggio notes, which is the same thing as the mixolydian mode, D mixolydian. So I could play over the D. See what I'm saying? Right over the D. That was the wrong note in there for the D right here. Where I can go A minor pentatonic. So that's kind of like a like a manipulated pentatonic scale right here. Where I'm playing the major sixth of A. You know, a lot of people play this riff. It's a very 50s sounding riff. You could go back and forth like. So 
check it out. You go. <laughs> Over the D. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, <coughs> over the D, it's just D mixolydian, which I have a chart for. I'll send, and it's the same. It's the same pattern. It's the D mixolydian. It's a one major second, major third, fourth, fifth, sixth, dominant seventh, a flat seven, D. So it's the same up here. Here. As I played here in A. So the A mixolydian scale right here is like this in this first position. And then D mixolydian is right up here. Try one more time. But why go all the way up here when you could just stay down here and play the same thing? Just go. Same thing. So it's always good to kind of keep your hands closer when the chord's changing. You know, when it goes to D, just play that scale. Check it out when it goes to the D. Here's the A, mix lid. And D mix lid. So then you could play the E minor pentatonic. So you have the A pentatonic scale, minor pentatonic. You have the A mixolydian. You have the D, D mixolydian. And when it goes to the E, you can play the E pentatonic scale. I'm playing it in this position. I'm playing the E minor pentatonic right here. It's the third position. It's like this. Same thing as if you were to play it up here in the position everyone knows. Play it here. If you played it down here in the open position. Right here. I know everyone knows that one. Play the same thing here. So you're playing all these scales in the same exact area makes it a lot makes it pretty simple. Ninth in there.
<laughs> All right, Oz Man. Give me a round of applause. Hello, hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for mentioning that. I didn't mention that. And I do hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And uh, Oz Man, I was going to uh, let you know that I was, I was really close to doing the pedal board review today, but really couldn't get that one out. So I'm really trying, and I want to do that. It's really on the top of the list, so it's coming real soon there. I'm not forgetting about you with that one, so thank you for that. And my apologies for not doing it today. And uh, let's see, any questions about any of this stuff? I do have a question here. Scott thinks it's tasty. Well, thank you very much. You know, I always say with the blues, it's easy to play, but it's hard to feel. And that, that's not my saying. That's, I think Hendrix said that. <laughs> the blues, easy to play, hard to feel. And uh, I think I brought that up with Thanksgiving, Happy Thanksgiving. And here's a question from Alan Shenfield. Hopefully I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I'm not butchering it. Sheenfield? Shen, Shenfield? Shenif Shenfield? Like Centerfield? Shenfield. Just a question on sound, which goes back to what Osman wanted me to do, the pedal board. Just a question on sound. What type of amp and effects and settings are you using to get your sound? Well... Just in a, in a nutshell, I'll tell you real quick, is that I'm just using my a regular pedal board with a tuner, a couple different distortion boxes right here. Like here's clean. I have a, a hot tone bl blues pedal. Gives me that type of sound, which I didn't use at all today. But I'm using this Nobles distortion. delay, a little delay action. And that's it for that. I'm going through a looper, but I'm not using the looper right now. Now with the pedal board, in order to get this into my computer, you couldn't just plug that straight in because it wouldn't sound right. I'm going into a, in a even though my, my Apollo, I have a, an interface, the Universal Audio Apollo Twin interface. And it does have good preamps. It has unison technology, which actually allows you to plug pedals in. But if you set it right, it's okay. But usually it's not really that that great. I'm using a, a an amp modeler, which if you know anything about modelers, they allow you to plug into like a PA system or into a computer system like this. And I'm using the Iridium, the Strymon Iridium pedal on like a regular clean sound. So this is the Strymon right here. You know. And it's set to like a blues deluxe sound. You know. So it's clean, and it allows me to hook up pedals. And I can set the rhythm to, to be a full crunch sound, whatever I want, but I leave it clean so they can use my pedals to affect the sounds and everything. So it's going from the Iridium right into the Apollo Twin, which is the interface into the computer. Now playing this backing track, that is my, it's a Pro Tools track that's playing this that I created. So essentially, I have two computers going here because of, of the strength. Not to be all geeky and everything, but um, I've discovered that when you do everything on one computer, things go all wrong. So I have one computer that's just audio that's strong enough to control, to you know, be steady, I suppose, or uh, stable to play the music. And then that music's coming out into another computer 
to another interface, a Scarlet that I have going to this computer, which is for live streaming. So it's two computers. One's for the audio, all the audio and my mic going into that computer, Pro Tools and everything. Then it's coming out going to a computer that's just doing live stream right there. So that's it. I would like to do a video on that because it'd be pretty pretty fun. Pretty cool. So that was a long long answer for that. I'm gonna short reply from you. Yep. <laughs> All right. So uh, I have an old GNX Digitech pedal board. Oh, GNX. I'm not sure I heard of that one, but I've heard of those Digitechs. I mean, I use one. I've used one for a long time. You're right. It is kind of complicated, but it works. And I'd rather, to be honest with you, if it was up to me, I'd rather just play through one of my amps right over there. As you can see, if you can see them, it's a little dark. I've got a Marshall Slash Head sitting over there, <laughs> which is a, um, basically, it's just a copy. It's in 1996. I've got it. It's a copy of a Jubilee. It's, all it is is a silver anniversary. 1987 Marshall Jubilee, which Slash used, and when they stopped making them, they only made them one year. He put his name on them way back when, and um, it's called the Slash. That's the snakeskin head right there. Below that, I got a, a, um, a Blues Deluxe, 15-inch, 40-watt Deluxe, Hot Rod Deluxe. And next to that, I bought this amp, this Fender, um, I think it's a new Mustang. I recently got that. I used it once on a gig because it's very lightweight. It's like 40 watts, and it weighs 15 pounds. It allows me to kind of take it on a train. So, not sure I love it yet, but uh, I, I, I tell you what I don't love is uh, lugging amps around. So, yeah, so this is, you know, pretty cool, pretty easy way to do this. And now, you know, you could always move it around. You don't have to be stuck in one area. You know, we play the A7 here. You know, I'm playing um, the A minor pentatonic. Play it up here. You know, you don't have to be located in one area. I mean, I have lots of videos on moving around the pentatonic scale. Play it up here. When it goes to the D, you have the D chord, the D note here. And you could play that arpeggio here. to A here. What's cool about that is when it goes to the five chord, the E, you have that E first position pentatonic here. Back to the D, which I could play A minor pentatonic here. I'm kind of looking for, my voice just jumped a little bit. I've been under the weather. I'm looking for some notes that are a little different from the last scale that I'm using. So when I'm playing the A minor pentatonic here, when I go to D, this, is this note's not in the A minor pentatonic. This note is, this one is. So, so hit that note. In that D note. I'm sorry, this note. The G sharp. Right about there. Yeah, see what I'm saying? Like if you're playing A minor pentatonic, you're not going to have this note. And when it goes to the E minor pentatonic, You have that B note there. And when it goes to the A. So there's a lot of different, um, you know, they do that in jazz a lot. You're just looking for that note that's in a different scale. And it works. So even without a backing track, you could tell harmonically, you know, where the movement is of the A.
It goes to the D. I'm in the E. I'm playing the pentatonic scale here. I'm playing that sixth degree, just like I did up here. Where is it? works for you that's all that matters yeah you're absolutely right Scott Olson <laughs> all right so hopefully you're enjoying this so far any questions about any of the scales or anything let me know and um, trying to keep it as simple as possible just uh there you go. let's give it another pass here and see what we got
the blues. <laughs> Hope you guys are enjoying this so far. Thanks for spending some time here with me on a Tuesday. I normally go live on on Sundays. And on, you know, one thing actually I want to mention too about this is that when you are playing the mixolydian mode and you go to a um, to the seventh degree if you go down a half step that's the third of the D note back to the A you have the E seventh D again, the seventh degree. It runs up to the third. So you see all this movement going around. Root, third, seventh. Half step down. It's the seventh of D. It's the third of A now. George, thanks for stopping by. A7. so much George that's very cool very cool let me give you a round of applause thank you Jack Lambert <laughs> so yeah these arpeggios are really helpful these mixolydian modes right here it's kind of like a 3-7 technique thing where the 7th degree <laughs> 7th degree right here and I have my windows open today because I've got the heat on in here, as most New York apartments do, and it's like it gets really hot. And I prefer that it wasn't on, but I have to open my windows, which makes it a little bit noisier in here. So my strings will go crazy with the heat, the temperature changing. So this A7 chord, the seven, falls right into the third of the D7 chord. And it also goes a half step up, back to the A7, the seventh degree. But then it also goes to the third of E. D7 chord. and butter lick. <laughs> All right. So we're playing the blues. Easy to play, hard to feel. I should have put that as a subtopic. In my thumbnail. Next time. I'm sure this won't be the last blues video that I do. <laughs> so thanks for spending time once again here with me on a Tuesday. I usually go live on Sundays at 1, but I, as I mentioned already, I was out of town. But uh, next Sunday, I'll be back, regular time, regular schedule, Sunday, 12 o'clock, 
And I do want to mention briefly that I do have a guitar course called the Essential Skills Collection for Guitar. And I go over a lot of the stuff that I'm doing here. But it's very focused. And there's three main topics on the course for now. I'm planning on adding more to it, too. A whole nother section for free. Because this course is going to be... Ex- it's going to be expanding, continuously expanding. And uh, the first part, I go through fretboard memorization because that's where you could really, um, you know, memorize. Okay, I'm playing in A, so where's A? All these A's everywhere. D. Back to A. E, you can play E anywhere. Here's D. A. So it's really cool to memorize where all the notes are. It's really, really simple. I'll show you that in a in the video and I go through the circle of fifths where that's basically where all the chord progressions are and it's that circle that looks like kind of like a steering wheel or a pizza pie <laughs> and all the chord progressions are in there I, I, I break that down and then we go into the blues where there's all kinds of blues progressions and uh, really really good stuff in there so check that out I'll put a link in the description for that course and I appreciate that thank you so much so if any questions about this stuff, please let me know. And let's see, what else can we talk about here for this? Um, hmm. All right. So let's so break out of this first position, right? And say we could play up. I mean, if you look at the cage system, this is really the E shape A chord. You could play a... D shape, like here's a D chord, right? Here's a D, well here's an A chord, but it's a D shape, because there's a D. So I could play right up here. Instead of going to, to D here, this A shape. I can play the D chord right up here as a G shape. Like here's a G chord, right? If you take that, you bring it all the way up here to the D. Instead of playing the E up here, play the E in this A shape. Let's give that a shot, see what it sounds like up here. to the E uh, 
That's right. I, I messed up on it. I'm supposed to play the uh, the A shape and the G. Yeah, that's a good riff right there. Check this out. the rails a little bit but we're rocking we're doing all right Oz man that post that December 28th was a typo I'm guessing what December 28th what do you mean what's today the 28th the post for a typo oh what you talk what you talk about Oz man you mean the post, the community post that I put for the 28th? Today is the 28th. And I am live, I think. <laughs> I'm live. And uh, if, if that's what you're referring to, going live today instead of Sunday, this past Sunday. I didn't go live Sunday, so I went live today, Tuesday, in place of Sunday. Because I don't want to miss a week. You know, if I can't make Sundays, I'll go Tuesdays or Monday. But um, that was already scheduled for Tuesday. So here we are. Can't think of a better place I'd rather be with you guys for an hour, playing some guitar, showing some stuff. Hopefully you got, uh, you know, something out of this, you know. And uh, so take it. If you want a, a copy of this um, free MP3 that I have for this, just send me an email, info at Jerry Cherry. I'll shoot it right over to you. I'm going to get those graphics together with those um, scales. But, uh, you know, just keep it keep it simple. You know, have some fun with it, you know. Like, I always try to focus on just bending, vibrato, feel, emotion. Not think of anything. Not think of any scales or modes or anything. And just think of, just feel. No, don't even think, you know. That's what music is all really about. You know, just getting that emotion through. So, so what confused you? What confused you? That's what the confused me. The uh, oh, December. Did it really say December? <laughs> well, you know, um, it's been a really kind of crazy couple days. 
for me. Um, so you have to forgive me. It was a, there was a, a death in the family over the weekend and a, without getting too in depth with it, it's been really, really hard. But uh, I had to do some, some obligations and I stuck by them and I went with it and I did the best that I could. And some of the things that I might have done in the last few days could be wrong. And you just pointed out one of them and sorry about that. And, you know, it's uh, if I put this in for, I totally believe you. And, you know, I'm trying to cross my T's and dot my I's. And sometimes you just forget simple things like that but you know what I will go live December 28th as well <laughs> but you figured it out right so it's a little bit after Christmas December 28th you know I'll go back and fix it a little too late right now but I'll fix it anyway family first foremost that's right you know so all right guys um, thanks for spending some time here with me today on this Tuesday this tally Tuesday <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. Scott, I think you pointed that out with me. So, Scott, you're awesome. Thank you so much. And Jeffrey, Boyle, and George, Osman, thank you for the condolences. And uh, it really means a lot to me. And, and thank you for anyone else who's going to be watching in the future. And uh, we popped in for a little bit. Alan, Alan Schoenfield, sorry for butchering your your name there really cool of you for, for tuning in and um try my darndest for next sunday to do that pedal board review for you osman i think you'll enjoy that so have a great rest of the week whatever it is that you do kiss your family members kiss your friends be cool be kind and be cherry and if you want to see a great video on the blues it's five steps to becoming a better blues player in like seven minutes or something like that. <laughs> I'll put it up there and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Love you guys. Be cool. Yeah, I hear you, Jeffrey. Yeah, not easy, but uh, we'll stick together. All right. Love you guys. Have a great week. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace. <laughs>